everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to look at how to create your own custom MIDI maps uh, for anyone that has bought a MIDI controller that is not exactly what Touch Designer already supports. It can be kind of confusing, somewhat annoying, um, but it's actually not that hard. So I'm going to go through how to create your own. Um, the one that I'm going to be using today is a Korg Nano Control 2, which is pretty cheap. Uh, I like it a lot because it has, in my opinion, the most sliders per dollar. And I like that. But it's not supported natively in Touch Designer. Uh, so I cannot really do much with it. Uh, if I just drop a MIDI down, you know, like this will work, but this isn't super useful. And if I have a MIDI map, nothing is working. Uh, so press Alt D to open up the MIDI device manager. Uh, I'll delete that existing mapping. We can create a new mapping from Nano Control 2 to Nano Control 2, and then I'll just pick this Nano Control mapping. And we can see that, so I'm moving slider uh, 3 right now. You can see that's mapping to slider 10, slider 4 maps to 11, slider 1's not on there at all. Who knows, like 3 is something like 9. Um, so what I am seeing is that this nano control MIDI map is not at all helpful, actually. Um, so we'll just have to create our own. And we will do that by keeping this MIDI device mapper open, getting rid of this, going up to our local comp uh, at our project level, jumping in the MIDI component, and working here. So what we're looking at is a table that shows us our MIDI devices, as well as this, which is the definition of their mapping, as well as a template and uh, this thing called user devices, which is empty. So I'm going to copy this template, go inside user devices, paste it in here and call this Nano control two. Change my text to nano control two. <clears throat> I will change this name to also nano control two and nano control two. Okay. So I'm not going to do any buttons for this because I don't really use buttons, but I definitely want to make sure these sliders are mapped right. So for sliders, here's how to do it. I am now moving slider one on my value. We can see this message is coming in um, and we also get the values. This is slider two with an index of two. Slider three has an index of three values coming in and a message. So you'll notice that for slider one, my message is B0, double zero, some other things. Slider two, or sorry, slider, yeah, slider two, my message is B0, one some things. Slider three, B0, two, some things. Um, that goes the whole way up to this is slider seven and slider eight maintains that pattern. And then if I go to slider nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, all of them keep that same naming convention, which is super easy. So what I'm gonna do is actually just edit this table in Excel. Um, if you guys have not yet set your default file editors, you can go to edit preferences and select your preferred table editor and text editor. 
So I have VS Code as my text editor, and then I found my Excel EXE for my table editor. That's because I find Excel is still the best for handling tabular stuff. So basically, we're going to need to replace this column with something that looks like B, uh, B0, B00, or sorry, B0 for slider one, uh, then double zero, and then dash dash for anything. So this will grab channel one. We want this to be channel two. So we could just type all of them individually, but I'm going to do this. and use a quick formula, whoops, to concatenate all of this together. Actually, I'll do this, D1 comma space, and then E1, boom. And now if I copy all of these down, but actually, I guess I just need to do B1, B2, and I think just like that. So my slider one, I have double zeros. That's looking pretty good. My slider two, oh, see, this is wrong. This is B0 for all of them. Um, and then I need my second row of double zeros to be the one that is switching based on the channel. So actually, I just want this to be B0, Control D to drop that down. And here, I'm actually going to do equals concat zero. And then um, row minus one. So now my slider zero is looking good. One, two, sorry, slider uh, one, slider two, slider three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So that gets me up to here. That's all looking good. Uh, now my slider nine actually goes up. So we flip to BO10 instead of BO8, which would be our pattern. So that's fine. And just get rid of this and drag this down. But now we got to get rid of these zeros. So we can say if row less than 10, we'll concat this. And if not, we'll just take the row. There's a problem. Uh, oh, I forgot parentheses. There's still a problem. Where's that? That carrot. And then now, if I drop these down, there we go. All right, so maybe you could have just typed this all that fast, but whatever. The point is that um, we now have this, which I can paste as values over here, and then delete, save, X out. And now we can see that our dat here is updated. Um, and now, 
I think that should be it for our actual map. Um, then we need to add in our mappings, we need to find a way to see this here. And the way to do that is I believe in this maps. Uh, no, that's not right. In the MIDI. And then here in my definition, I'm going to find the path to this nano control two and put that in the definition. And now if I go back to my regular project and do MIDI in, whoops, not a MIDI in, a MIDI in map, I can see that my values are all working properly. This is slider one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, and so all of my sliders are corresponding as they should. So if you wanted to add a new one, you could just go back in here. You could come in, create a new template, create a new row here, and just point your definition at your new device. Um, and that's really the key part that I had trouble with in the past was figuring out that I had to point the definition at my user defined map. I also had problems when using the touch designer UI to add a device with a mapping. Um, it never really stuck. Like I would just lose the mapping each time and it was really frustrating to reconfigure. So I started going this approach and just adding my maps directly in the network. Uh, it does work for me. Um, you can also then just save this component so you can easily just drop your maps in. If you're opening touch designer on a new machine and you want to just port over your MIDI maps, uh, it's really easy to do that using this process. So that's it. Um, I hope that gets everyone going on using custom MIDI devices. They are so useful. Um, got like 10, um, can never have too many. So I will leave it there. Thank you to all my Patreons uh, and supporters. As always, it's just so great. Thank you guys so much. Um, I'm always kind of at a loss for words uh, when I say thank you anyway. So I'll just stop. Thanks. I'll see everyone next time.